The trebuchet was a medieval siege weapon capable of throwing a 90 kilogram projectile over 300 meters. Unlike the catapult, it uses a counterweight system to propel the projectile rather than a spring, which is what makes it the superior siege weapon. The first part of loading the trebuchet is putting the string end on the hook. And then the second loop of the string goes onto the release pin, which is at a specific angle so that it flies off like so. Then we place the golf ball in the pouch and slide the nail to the firing mechanism. Then we want to fire it, just take the nail out. The purpose of this lab is to explore and understand the physics and principles behind trebuchets. We hope to observe the effects of changing the counterweight mass and the string length and how it affects the range of the projectile that is thrown. We hypothesize that if the counterweight is increased, then the distance of the projectile will increase proportionally. We think that the string length will find an optimum at the top of a bell curve. To test this, we built the trebuchet and tossed some golf balls. We first had to determine the best release parameters and fine-tune the design. To do this, we placed a 1 kilogram mass on the counterweight arm and fired the golf ball multiple times, taking distance measurements with each time. By doing this, we were able to find the optimum release angle. Once we found the optimum release angle, we increased the mass of the counterweight by 500 grams after starting at 1 kilogram. We then measured the distance of three projectiles and averaged the number. We also tested different string lengths using a length of 50, 41, 30, and 16 centimeters. The trebuchet works by converting gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. It takes a large mass moving slowly and changes it into a small mass moving quickly, because torque equals force times radius times sine of theta. There is a net torque on the lever, so the large force of the counterweight moving down creates a smaller force moving up on the ball, which moves faster because the ball has much less mass. Usually the counterweight is about 100 times heavier than the projectile. A trebuchet quickly becomes more complicated than a simple lever because sine of theta is constantly changing on the counterweight. The counterweight swings down, but gravity is always pointing straight towards the ground. Along with this, there is also the centrifugal acceleration of the sling, which is rotating along the end of the lever. So here's how we, here, here, here's what we did. So, what we want to do is find the efficiency, the operational efficiency of the trebuchet, right? And what we want to do is compare the um, the MGH, the uh, potential energy here, this moving down, to the uh, kinetic energy of this ball, which is a one half m v squared. And and so to do that, what we got to do is we got to find we find M MGH with e. This is this here's the acid foot, and it's like a two kilos or whatever. This, this here, what we did is we timed it and we get like what, what, two, 1.12 two, two seconds and let's see, uh, V and we got the distance, right? We, we, me we measured the distance, what, like what, 30, 30 feet. Okay. And so we got like an average velocity figure and we were able to vector whatever and this and that and is this still, is this still on? Yeah. So, um, once we did that, we were able to find find this and, and calculate the energy of 13 one, one half point four golf ball equals is uh, 13 squared. Okay, and that that was like it was like 40 percent MGH. MGH was. Like... So, what was the other thing? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, it was the torque, the torque, torque curve, torque, right? And so the trebuchet goes from with the uh, this thing all the way down, and this thing like up here, you have the counterweight and the string, right? And then it, it moves down this way, so you get 
45 degrees above horizontal, like straight down. And theoretically, you got right here, you got peak torque, right? And we wanted to see if we could calculate that. So what we did is we, we put this in Logger Pro. And there's a there's going to be a picture of this on the screen right now, probably. We put this in Logger Pro. We do this, right? We get, we get an axis. And, and we put the, the, the trebuchet right here on this axis, right? And then we measure this, uh, this Y and this X and be like, right, tan, negative one, uh, so, so, cut, cut, tan, up, uh, Y over X, yeah? Uh, equals theta, right? And theta equals theta equals theta, uh, like all over the place. And so, right, well your torque curve, it should look like this, right? It goes up and then it goes down. And that's, that's what we, we, after like a few hours, we got that. Cause, oh boy. We originally hypothesized that if the counterweight mass is increased, then the projectile will fly proportionally farther. We also hypothesized that if the string length is increased, then we would see a bell curve relationship where we can determine the optimal sling length. Our results show that if the mass is indeed increased, then the distance thrown also increases proportionally. And this is due to the way that the trebuchet converts the energy from the counterweight to the projectile. After testing the changing mass, we tested the changing length. Our results for this section of the lab showed that the peak showed the peak we expected, but did not clearly show a bell curve. Despite all this, when you think about it, the trebuchet cannot throw the stone in a negative direction, assuming everything is set up properly. We found that the shorter lengths would release the shot way too soon as a result of the rotational speeds required to accelerate the mass closer or farther from the axis. While the short string length resulted in an early release, the longer string sometimes failed to release at all because the sling was never at full extension before the counterweight was at its lowest point and the arm stalled. After collecting data, we wanted to, to, de wanted to determine the efficiency of our design. To do this, we retested the changing mass experiment and recorded the time the projectile was in the air. From there, we were able to do some kinematics and find the velocity at which the projectile flew and at what initial velocity. This also allowed us to find the kinetic energy of the golf ball and compare it to the potential energy, energy from the counterweight. We found that as the mass increased, the trebuchet became less efficient, which we believe to be slightly backwards. We think that the release angle has a huge part in the efficiency because it allows all of the energy to be transferred and then utilized, if tuned properly, into the projectile. Because of the way the torque curve works and the different rotational and radial motion going on in the trebuchet, it becomes very complicated pretty quickly to find what seem like simple things.